Most apps implement some sort of autocomplete feature to help users when searching for a product or location. So if you want to use React Native and build something similar to what's on screen, keep on watching. So the first thing you want to do is create a new screen. This screen is already hooked up into my navigation, but if you haven't done that, you're going to want to do that as well. So to add on to this, I'm going to import safe area view here as well. And then get rid of this and just import style sheet here. Um, and then use state. You're going to want that from React. React. And then change this view for a safe area view and then import touchable without feedback touchable without feedback then wrap everything in that and get rid of that and then add an on press function so that when it's pressed we dismiss the keyboard. Dismiss. And that's going to be from React Native as well. So let's give this safe area view a style of flex1. Within this, we need to create our input. So on top of the input box, we need a label to indicate that users can search for a location using that that input. So that's what I'm going to put here. So search location. And then on top of that, oh, let me change this real quick. So below that, we need to have our text input. And we can import that from React Native text input. text input. We're going to give this a placeholder of find location. Text input has a prop called on change text. So we're going to create our function called on change text and pass in text, which is a type of string. And this is actually going to be asynchronous. So this function is where we will get the data for the listings, and we're also going to change the text input value. In order to do that, we're going to need to create a new state, and that state is going to represent the value within the text input. So I'm going to call it input set input equals use state of string, and then we're going to assign that here. So value equals input. Now on change text will be equal to on change text. So now that that's done, let's add some logic to on change text. So first we need to call set input, and then that's going to be equal to text log get data. Now let's add some styles to this and then we'll check it out on our devices. So these styles are going to be equal to this, a height of 40, margin horizontal of 12, border width of 1, padding horizontal of 10, and border radius of 5. And let's also change the styles for the label above. And that's going to be equal to a margin left of 12, margin vertical of 5, and font size of 12. Alright, let's go and check it out. And we get something that looks like this. So now that we've got our input in place, we need to start thinking about the data that we want to display. So I'm going to create a new variable called data. So the data that I'm going to be using is coming from this service called Location IQ. It's kind of like Google Places, but a lot cheaper. As you can see, 5,000 requests per day on the free trial. So I created this proxy server to make a GET request 
to that API. And that's what I'll be calling in my React Native app. So with that being said, this is what the type looks like that gets returned from that API. And really what it consists of is an array of these locations. So I'm gonna go back into this screen and change this to this type that's getting returned. And then I'm gonna re then I'm going to import that from my types folder. To decrease the amount of calls to the server, I am going to check if the length of the text is greater than two. So starting on the third character, that's when we'll be making calls to the server. So let's create our endpoint variable here. And typically on the web, you would say something like localhost, port, whatever, you know? But using Expo, you have to get this URL here. Because if you're saying localhost and you're running this code right here on your iPhone or your Android, the localhost is going to be that Android device and it's not running the server. So go ahead and paste that in there. And then setting the query parameters that are needed. Now beneath that, we want to make a fetch request. So await fetch endpoint. And then if there is a response, we're gonna have data equal to await res.json. And then once we have this, this will be the array of locations. And we will assign data to this array of locations. And to be more specific, let's add that type right there. And we're not going to want to set data if the data, if this data array is empty. So let's add an if statement here saying if data dot length is greater than zero, then we'll set data equal to this data. I also added in this line so that whenever a user clears their search input, there will be no suggested results returned. If you don't want that functionality, don't include this line. So now, we need to display this list of data. And to do that, we're going to use a flat list. So go up to your imports and import flat list from React Native. And below your text input, that's where you're going to put your flat list. Set data equal to data. For render item, we want to render something that's pressable and displays some of this information. So let's get to that by specifying render item. So once you get here, import pressable from React Native. And on press can be whatever you want. Typically, you're gonna to wanna to pass this item information to another screen. Say you're going to map. You're gonna to wanna to pass the coordinates that you receive from that item. Here it would be lat and long. You're gonna to wanna to pass that information to another screen, say a map screen. But here we're just going to alert that data. Now depending on your data, pass anything that you want into this pressable component. My data is a little complicated, so I created this function called get item text. It pretty much just sees if the location is a city or not and conditionally renders the text if it is or is not. And then it also displays this icon on the left and you can import icons from at expo slash vector icons. To see the list of vector icons, go to this website. You can also just type in expo vector icons and this should pop up. So ultimately, we're passing in a view that has a flex direction of row. So these two components are going to be side by side. This icon is going to be next to this text. 
and this text is dependent upon the item that we're passing in. And that item is coming from the data variable, which is coming from that API request. So let's call this function here, get text, get item text and pass in item here. And then for the key extractor, let's just set it to some unique ID. And for me, that'll be this OSM ID. Let's set shows vertical scroll indicator to false. So head back to your instance and you should have something like this. Whenever you start typing, you should get auto suggested results. And whenever you click on one of the items, you'll get an alert of that JSON data. So I hope that this helped and thank you very much for watching.